Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about some do's and don'ts for PFSense upgrades to have your upgrade process go smoothly. If you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you want to hire short project or see, hire button up at the top. If you're looking for deals and discounts and other ways to support the channel, there's some affiliate links down below for products and services that we talk about. PFSense 2.45 is what I want to talk about today, though. There is the release. I covered this yesterday, and then in... Inevitably, this is what happens. Uh, people want to issue caution notices because of their bad experience with it. But I think a lot of these people have not taken the time, and I'm hoping to save many of you some of the headache of following some pretty basic update process steps. They have an upgrade guide. Now, I think because PFSense doesn't have like constantly new releases coming out all the time, where you're constantly updating your firewall, that people uh, forget that this exists. So hopefully this is a reminder and uh, it's not too hard to update PFSense, but if you don't follow the procedures, you're going to have a bad time. First, I will cover my update experience with one of my home ones, which took longer than expected. And I bring this up because the NetGate SG1100 is a newer product, and this is a pretty you know reasonable upgrade that they had here. And it did take 18 minutes to load the update and everything. Now, I thought this was kind of a long time, but it is an ARM processor and extracting all the files needed on an ARM processor is going to take a little while. And to show that I practice what I preach, this is Zavix monitoring my home system. Right here, you see the little pre-upgrade reboot and before we actually did the update. Then there's the update 18 minutes, and then we have some telemetry data missing here for the Zavix plugin where the Zavix plugin was updated. And this is what it looks like right now up to the minute as of right now. It is... Uh, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's 18.30 uh, right here. And this is where the update, that's the gap. Because someone had asked about memory usage and I'm not really seeing a big change in memory usage. Uh, matter of fact, it seems to be used a little bit less. These ups and downs are probably load on the system and uh, things like that. But overall, after running it for from 11.30 till 18.30 here, you can see very minor amounts of memory upgrade uses. And most of it is just me uh, VPNing back to my house to watch something. Anyways. Back to the video here. What happens is when there's an update, let's run through the process here. Pre-upgrade test, make a backup. Already made a backup. That's what this little file is down here. Already downloaded it. So we got that part done. Prepare a backup plan prior to updating your firewall on the off chance because, well, it's your firewall. It doesn't go well. Already have the download ready, have the ISO ready, have it ready to be reloaded ahead of time. That's something we usually do. That way, if it does break, because, well, if my firewall breaks, I don't have internet and I like to get it ahead of time. So uh, have that, already have it on a thumb drive or however you're going to reload it. Thumb drive is probably the most practical way, but you know, that way you have this at the ready when you do it and it works really well. Reinstalling a previous release. Now this is something of note. If you have problems, your backup file, the XML file I downloaded, you can't go backwards. So if you have the backup file from a newer version and you load back an older version, but you already updated and download the back off the newer version, you can't revert. So something to think about. Now, we run it all on hardware, but if you are running it on a virtual machine, obviously this becomes a no-brainer. We are running my lab, though, inside of here. So I have these two snapshots. And what these snapshots are is uh, ones before and after the upgrade. That way I don't have to wait for the upgrade to go again, but it upgraded perfectly fine in our lab. Snapshots in a VM, obviously one of the easiest ways to do this. If, if you are running it that way, definitely some advantage you have. Just click the snapshot and revert to snapshot. The pre-upgrade reboot. This is a really important step. They say it's optional, but I don't think it is for our processes. And one of the reasons why is these firewalls have long uptimes between upgrades. You don't know if the drive may have, have a problem. And what happens is if you don't do a pre reboot upgrade and the drive was failing, but because PFSense had all the necessary components already in memory, it was still routing traffic. When you do reboot, maybe it was for an upgrade, you find out the hard drive inside it was failing. And now you've now conflated two separate problems. You're thinking the upgrade was the problem, but it wasn't. You already had a failed hard drive. It was like you're dead and you didn't know it. <laughs> and this is one of those easy ways you can test. Just reboot the firewall. If it comes back up running, great. Now you know that your hardware is good. Now you can load the upgrade. Because uh, like I said, if a hard drive fails and it pulls all that data into memory and it's not doing many writes, so anything you may have is some logging errors. And the system will just keep on running because it just can't write to the hard drive anymore. So keep that in mind, that real preview upgrade. They say optional. I say not optional, but yeah, that's my opinion. They have, this is their opinion. These are the people that write the software. Performing the update and packages. This is the one where people are having this little update caution problem. 
it says it pretty clearly. Do not update packages before upgrading PFSense. Just read that first line and stop. And I bring this up because you notice that these packages need updating, but so does the operating system. If the operating system needs update, don't update the packages because you could end up with conflicts. They expect you, the folks over at PFSense and NetGeek, to be running the latest version before you do the package updates. So when there's a new version out, when you're ready to load the new version, only then load the package updates. So that's an important step because you can end up with some version conflicts and end up some of the problems. And that's what this entire discussion and this forum was. And I believe this happens almost every update when uh, people start updating packages prior thinking, hey, why don't I get this package update stuff out of the way before I load the whole thing? You're doing it in reverse per the instructions from NetGate. So pretty important step right there. The last thing I will mention, just a note, because I've done some HA videos, they do have instructions for the HA down here at the bottom. Uh, so additional notes, upgrading high availability deployments. Generally, the recommended path for upgrading high availability cluster is to first upgrade the secondary node. And after it comes back up, put the primary node into persistent CARP maintenance mode under status CARP and then run it. So they have a process for that. I know it's more of an edge case, but they do have procedures for that as well. But that important piece of it is the backup the reboot, and now we're going to go ahead and update it. Now for uh, brevity and to make this shorter, I'm just going to revert to the other snapshot so I don't have to wait. The, it took like, I don't know, 12 minutes to update, but now I don't have to pause the video for 12 minutes. We'll just go ahead and revert the snapshot here. Uh, you know, I don't even think I need, well, I'll halt it. I'll I'd still do a proper shutdown, I guess. I don't really need to, but we'll halt this and go over here and I'll just revert to the snapshot real quick. So I'll go ahead and revert the VM to this one, fire it back up. and log back in, it'll be all up to date. All right, so now I'm running the latest and greatest version. It automatically updated the packages. I will admit my home system did not. And all I had to do is update the packages in post. I kind of mentioned that when I was talking about the second gap for the plugin update. I don't know why it didn't update the plugin, uh, but I updated it in post and it worked perfectly fine. So it wasn't really a big deal. Something else I'll mention, this is some further troubleshooting. Sometimes services don't start. Those are issues you can deal with. So this one right here didn't. So we'll go here to the traffic totals. Update graphs, display advanced. Uh, it's, it's just kind of stuck. I notice if you click enable, it thinks for a minute and then fixes it. So minor problem I ran into when setting this up. This is the uh, traffic totals one. So it's thinking, 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 and then it starts working again. It did this before. There we go. So that did happen from the update. So there are some things like that. Now, finally, one of the other ways you can deal with this when there's a few things that get goofed up and maybe the upgrade didn't go right. And I've run into this problem. One, you can just reload the firewall. I have the version. I have the a backup file. I have the one beforehand and now I can even make another one afterwards and we'll go ahead and do that. So this is the backup that's going to be uh, after the upgrade. So let me open the folder and rename it. So this is the before upgrade and this is the newest version. So if we look in this config file, it's going to be the latest version. We'll just call it latest config and I'll get rid of all the extras because I just don't need it. Makes the file look nice and simple. So there's the latest config. Now from here, it's actually pretty easy with PFSense. One, I can just master reset the firewall. I can download download or whatever. But what I want to do is we're going to go ahead and just choose the file. Go to downloads, latest config, restore. Are you sure you want to restore? Now, what this will do is just go through and PFSense will reboot and reapply all the settings again. I've had like quirkiness over the years and this sometimes just fixes it. It's rare that I have this problem, but if you do, it's not a big deal. You could also just reset this to factory defaults, even from uh, the command line and the same thing, go back in there. And as long as you can get into the interface and if you do factory defaults, it's going to go to default interfaces. So be careful doing that in case you uh, break a lot of other things, but it's just not that big of a deal because everything you need is in that file. So doing it this way, now it's going to go grab that file and it'll go through and install everything back again as it was. You only need the one config.xml file. Everything from your passwords to your certificates to your config settings for your different packages are all within that file. 
and this will allow you just to restore the system. So I've seen, you know, this happened uh, a couple of years, I think it was almost two years ago, there was a PHP update that caused a weird uh, bug. If you had updated the package, it's the same problem as package out of order, but it was like reload to firewall uh, if you had to, if it got that bad, because, uh, you know, the mismatching problem and pop a USB drive in with the config file. And as a matter of fact, if you do it over the top, there's an option for doing a rescue install. So you can do an install and pull the config file all at the same time. So not that big of a deal to reload PFSense if this worst case scenario happens, just as long as you have a backup. Unfortunately, many of the people that contact us for uh, that level of support, oh, I didn't make a backup. That's why I need so much help. But can you try to extract it from there? And yes, there is a backup file. If you can boot off of another bootable and get the drive, yes, there is a location by which you can extract that file. And I can show you real quick. As soon as it boots up, I'll show you where that is. And right here. So most people will never need to know where the configuration resides unless you're one of those people that didn't follow the backup. And it's CF says conf has config XL. Typically conf is a symlink for CF conf will also be accessible directly from conf says config.xml. Varies by platform and file system layout. But yes, this is something you can get if you need to extract it from a completely broken system that you somehow forgot to back up uh, beforehand because you didn't know about these documents. But you can tell the system it's just all back up and running out from the reinstall and it should have a note here package reinstallation process finished successfully this is one of the steps when it did the reinstall it also grabbed all the packages and reset them up if they needed to be um, because we didn't delete and purge or break anything from the restore but you can tell that it working perfectly fine now. So this is another way to fix some of those quirky issues with just do the restore on there and away you go. And because we had this backed up with this uh, VN stat D already working, even that came right back up and running. So hopefully this helps do the reboot, do the backup before you even do the reboot. Uh, by the way, if that's, if I didn't say that first, then make sure you do that first. So do the backup, do the reboot, do the update. And if any of the packages need to be updated, go ahead and update them afterwards. They should be automatically updated. But I, I have seen, like I said, my one system at home chose not to uh, do them automatically, but to do this. And if all those fails, just push the backup over the top of it and it'll reboot again and reapply the configuration and that can fix it. So hopefully this helps you. Hopefully it saves you some headaches and uh, happy uh, upgrading time. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.